Well, good morning, Glasgow. Uh, here uh, uh, this morning, today, throughout the day, share the good news of the gospel. God's Son, Jesus Christ, Son of God, sent into the world to save sinners. Bible tells us. And that good news, of course, Bible says, be declared in all the world, even in cities like Glasgow, where the needs are so great, men and women day by day, perishing in their sin, dying in their sin. And Jesus says, don't you know that if you do not believe that he is, the Son of God, you shall die in your sins. And that means a lost eternity. That means forever without God, forever without heaven. That means uh, a lost eternity. That means hell instead of heaven. Glasgow needs Jesus. You need Jesus. Need him more than you need to breathe. Son of God, you can read about him in the Word of God offered to you. Extract from the Bible here, offered to you quite freely, no cause, no obligation to you. You're simply for the taking. Read the Gospel of Luke and read about Jesus, all the things that he said and did. The loveliness of Jesus, the Son of God, how he came into the world to save and what he did to save, and how he's still saving sinners. Even today, even as I speak, those who believe, those who trust in him, in the Son of God, the promise is believe and you get salvation from sin and death and hell, from our worst enemies, from our worst nightmare. Believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus, says God, my son, take my son, and you shall be saved. So they say it's offered to you freely, no cost to you. Jesus, he tells you know, a lot of people he speaks to, you find in the Gospels, you know. He speaks to uh, the brokenhearted, you know, he came for them, he says, you know, to men. Those who are uh, mourning, you know, because of their sins. Uh, those who are, you know, heavy laden, burdened, uh, you know, by the weight of their guilt and sin. He came, he says, to open the eyes of the blind. All kinds of people that Jesus came for, you know, he says. But there, there's one kind of people, you know, Jesus never, never had anything to say to the self-righteous. Never, never had anything to say to the self-righteous. Those who think, you know, that they're okay. They don't need God in their lives. They don't need Jesus. They don't need salvation. They don't need forgiveness. I'm okay, you know. That's the attitude, you know. Self-righteousness. Can do it myself. Can get by myself. Don't need any help from anybody else self-righteousness. Jesus never ever had anything to say to the self-righteous. But if you're not one of them, if you're like the rest of us, you know, you see yourself as a sinner, you see yourself as being separated from God, maybe perhaps you even feel the weight, something of the weight of your sin, you know, deeds done in the past, things spoken, you know, even your thought life, you know, and and, uh, and, and maybe perhaps you have an inkling, you know, uh, that you, you are in spiritual need. Maybe even the fact, you know, Jesus says, you know, that he came that we might have life more abundantly. Don't you know there's no life without Jesus? He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the resurrection and the life. There's no life without Jesus. The problem, my friends, is that we are conceived, every one of us, we are conceived in sin, we are born in sin, 
We come into the world shaped in an iniquity. We come into the world in a state of death. And we just exist for however long God gives us in this world. Maybe 70 years. Maybe a few more. Maybe not even that many. But you just exist for a time. And then God takes you out of this world. And takes you before the judgment seat to give account for your earthly existence. Sinful earthly existence. But never knowing life. Never having tasted life. Never experiencing life. Because nobody, nobody ever lives until they come to, they meet with, and they trust in Jesus Christ. He's the life giver. That's what he means when he says, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the one who raises men and women dead in their sins, dead in their trespasses and sins. I'm the one who resurrects them. That's what you need, friends, not religion. Resurrection, not religion. Regeneration. You must be born again, says Jesus. You must, by his sovereign power, you must be made alive. Otherwise, you just exist, and then your existence comes to an end, and then your state, your condition of death, continues throughout all eternity, everlasting death instead of everlasting life. So it's Jesus, you see. You need Jesus if you want to live. Maybe perhaps you're one of these people, you're fed up with the existence in this world. You're, f you're fed up with the deadness. You're, 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 you know, you're, you're bored out your brains with it, you know? Because the world, the flesh, the devil, maybe you've tried them all, maybe you've tasted all of them, and you found, you know, that they're all wanting because nothing in this world, nothing created can ever satisfy man with eternity in his soul. Only Jesus, only the bread of life, the true bread that came down from heaven, the living bread, only Jesus can give you that satisfaction. This world and this existence in it, my friends, no life no joy, none of that abundant life. Is that how you would describe yourself in Glasgow today? Somebody with abundant life in you? You don't look like it. As you go by, I can see the misery in your face as it's Glasgow and it's raining. I know, same old, same old, but the same old misery, same old sinful misery, day after day after day, existing in the world, and living in sin and with the prospect of dying in your sin and going to a lost eternity without Jesus. You need Jesus. And that's not the same as religion. Yeah? There was some religious guys that Jesus spoke to. He says to them, time and time again, woe unto you, woe unto you hypocrites self-righteous religious men, Pharisees and scribes they were called. They were religious leaders. Their religion was hypocritical, just like most religion in your world and in your city of Glasgow today. Poisonous, dead religion. It's not dead religion that you need. Not a dead prophet you need, sir. It's a living savior. It's Jesus that you need. It's the gospel that you need. That's where the life is. That's where the power is. That's where the regeneration is. That's where the resurrection is. In Jesus Christ, not in religion. But Jesus, he comes to these religious men and he publicly, he publicly decries them and he declares his judgment upon them. Woe unto you, he says, again and again. Eight times, he says, publicly, woe unto you hypocrites, your hypocritical religion. A woe, you see, is the opposite to blessing. Blessing comes from God. Woe, my friends, he says to them, woe unto them for their self-righteousness and for their hypocrisy. 
It was a declaration, my friends, of the curse of God upon them. Doubly damned, he says, because of their hypocritical religion. It was a charade, my friend, used to captivate other people. They wouldn't obey God themselves. They disobeyed the Lord Jesus Christ. They wouldn't trust in him. They wouldn't enter into the kingdom of God. And they hindered other people by their hypocrisy, their hypocritical religion. They kept other people from entering God's kingdom. Just like much of your religion uh, in your country does today. It's not just that these religious people, it's not just that they keep themselves from entering God's kingdom. They keep other people from entering in. They're a stumbling block to others. And so Jesus pronounces this curse upon them because of their hypocrisy. They claimed to keep God's law, but they didn't. They broke uh, both tables of God's law. They sinned against God, and they sinned against their neighbor. They broke the entirety of the law. Their argument was that they were good. Is that you today? You think you're a good person? You don't need Jesus? You don't need my gospel? Well, God says there's none good, and there's none that doeth good, none at all. These men, they, they claim to be good. They claim to be keepers of the law, but they used the law. They used the law to abuse other people. They used the law, my friends, as a, as a front to their religion, but they never kept it. They didn't love God. They didn't love their neighbor. They hated God, and they hated their neighbor. Just like the majority of people in Glasgow today, that's the sum, don't you know, of God's law, his commandments. That you should love God and love your neighbor. But in your natural state, you can't do that until you've been born again. You cannot even begin to accomplish that. Loving God, I mean, and loving your neighbor. So you do the very opposite. In your sin, just like these men, you hate God and you hate your neighbor. Isn't it true, my friend? You would go, you would pull God from his throne if you could, but you cannot. But you do well at hating your neighbor, killing your neighbor by means of abortion, by means of euthanasia, drugs and violence, never done in your hatred for God, never done killing your fellow man, your neighbor. They that hate me love death, says God. And that love that you have, that love affair that you have with death is written all over your society. Abortion, 12 million on these islands since 1977, since the Abortion Act was passed. Murder at the Gallup, my friend. 12, 13 million children ripped from their mother's wombs and slaughtered on the altar of your sexual pleasure. And there's a man, he wants to shoot me with his finger. Eh? You see what I mean? Hating God and hating his neighbor. Killing, killing, killing. That's all you can do because you hate God and you hate your neighbor. That's your modern day, that's your modern day religion. I mean, whatever brand you care to name, the Pope with his Roman Catholic edifice, or Mohammed with his Islamic edifice, or Charlie Darwin with his evolutionary edifice. It's all religion, your evolutionary religion. Even that's hypocrisy, because you don't practice what you preach. You say that you believe in evolution, but you cling to a moral standard. Where does morality come from? It comes from the Bible. You don't practice what you preach. You say you're an atheist, but I say you're a, you're a hypocrite. Hypocritical religion, that's all it is. You cling to some kind of moral standard inferior though it is but you cling to it and my friend you have no grounds 
no basis for any morality at all if you call yourself an atheist or an evolutionist. And then, of course, well, we can go to the other religions too, uh, the Pope and his crowd, and Muhammad's too. My friends, it's a living saviour that you need. Alive from the dead, crucified, dead and buried, shed his atoning blood in order that you might be washed and made clean, reconciled to God, rose again from the dead, that you might be justified before God, made right with God. But only the gospel can do that for you. A dead prophet can't do that for you. A dead pope can't do that for you. A dead Charlie Darwin can't do that for you. Only Jesus Christ can do that for you. So talk to him. Come to him. But these men that Jesus speaks to, these, these religious leaders, he calls them out. They're hypocrites. He says, woe unto you, woe unto you, hypocrites, he says. They say that they keep God's law. Oh, they have the law of God, they say. We keep the commandments. And so they rejected Jesus. They rejected their Messiah. They thought they were good enough, but they didn't keep God's law. They didn't reverence God. They hated God. They used the name of God in vain. They blasphemed God's name, just as many people in Glasgow do today. Huh? Cursing with the name of Jesus, God's only son. Cursing by God's name swearing oaths in God's name in your magistrate's courts and your sheriff courts saying that you swear in God's name to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and then continue on to tell damnable lies blaspheming God's name my friends my friends hating their neighbors just as many in Glasgow do today. They were breakers. They were transgressors of God's law. They weren't keepers of God's law. And neither are you. There is no man born of a woman, my friends, who has ever kept the law of God perfectly, save the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He alone kept the law of God perfectly. Every other one of us, my friends, we were born in iniquity. You were born in sin. You come into the world shaping in iniquity and lawlessness, and you've lived all your days in lawlessness. And that's why you need a Savior. That's why you need the Son of God, because He is the only Savior. There is no other, my friends, no other good enough to open heaven's gate and to let you in. Only Jesus can reconcile you to God, not keeping the law, not trying, not endeavoring to keeping the law. That's an impossibility. I mean, you can't even keep up with your own standards. Huh? You disappoint yourselves because you can't keep up to your own standards. You fail every single day. So how on earth do you think that you would ever cope with God's perfect law? An impossibility. You wouldn't get past the first hour, never mind the first day. Lawbreakers, my friends, because you got a sinful nature. You've got a nature in you that wants to sin, that desires to sin, that loves to sin. Nobody makes you sin. Oh, you say, that man made me do it. Oh, you say, it was that woman. She made me do it. No, they didn't. You sin because you want to. You sin because you like to. You sin because it's your desire. My friends, nobody holds a gun to your head and tells you to lie. Nobody holds a gun to your head and tells you to sodomize. 
Nobody holds a gun to your head and tells you to fornicate. Nobody holds a gun to your head and tells you to do the drugs. Nobody holds a gun to your head and makes you get drunk out of your mind, bladdered as you call it. No, you do it quite willingly. You do it quite freely. Because that's the only freedom you've got. The freedom to sin. And to sin some more. And the more you sin, the more God gives you over to sin. To more and more sin. Until you are ruined. Until you are completely undone. Gives you over even some of you to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not fitting for animals to do, never mind human beings. So there's no hope in the cult. Uh -huh. There's no glad Muhammad. Uh -huh. Charlie Darwin, what can, what's he done for you? It's Jesus. It's the gospel. The power of God unto salvation. The dynamite of God with the ability to blow you out of that sin nature into the kingdom of God, the righteousness of God, through trusting through faith in the Son of God. Not your trying to be good, not your good works. You have no good works if you have no faith. Nothing, nothing with which to present before God by which he should accept you in that day. Nothing. Only, only Jesus, the only mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So you see, my friend, the law, the law is spiritual, the Bible says. And so, without spiritual life in you, how could you possibly able be able to maintain God's standards. You see, the very basis of it is love. It's the definition of love. It's that word, it's that, word that you keep using in the world. You sing songs about it. You have movies about it coming out of Hollywood. Love, love, love. Let's all love. Let's all be together and all just love one another. But for the life of you, you cannot define the word. You don't know what it means because you've never experienced it. You've never tasted it until you've been to Jesus. Love is defined by God's law. That's what love is. Loving God and loving your neighbor with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. So if you love your neighbor, you don't do the adultery. You don't do the filthy adultery. You don't do the fornicating. You don't do the drunken. Yeah. If you love your neighbor, you seek your neighbor's best good. You don't thief from your neighbor. You don't covet your neighbor's wife, his car, his house, his money. Love is defined, my friends, by God's law. That's what, God, that's what love is. Loving God and loving your neighbor. But without spiritual life in you. Unless you're born again. Dead, my friends. Not a little bit dead. Not a big bit dead, but totally completely dead my friends no spiritual life in you the flesh profits nothing says jesus it's the spirit who gives life here you are in the flesh just like a brute beast you get up in the morning what shall i eat today what shall i wear today and that's as high as your thinking ever gets because you're in the flesh. You're in the flesh, just like an animal. Feed you and clothe you and that's you. You're, you're good to go or so you think. Until God puts life into your soul. That's what Jesus means when he says, 
ye must be born again. God must put his life into your soul. He must resurrect you, regenerate you. He must put his love into your heart. Then and only then will you be able in some degree to love God and to love your neighbor and live the way that God intended you to live from the beginning. But you never have. But unless you're born again, as one minister once said, if a man's not born again, the day will come when he'll wish he had never been born at all. Because if you go out of this world in the state of fleshly existence, my friend, you're lost forever. Unless there's a day, a time that you can point to in your history when you can say that's the time, that's the month, that's the day when God and his son Jesus Christ came to me and made me alive. I don't know how you see it was a mystery, it was a miracle, but it happened. God came to me in his son and breathed life into my soul. And now so help me, I can't but help it. I love him and I love my neighbor. You can't point to such a time. You can't point to such an experience. You can't point to such a point in your history. You're dead in your sins. You've never been born again. You've never entered God's kingdom. You're lost. You're lost. You're undone. And only Jesus, only the mighty Son of God, who died on the cross, who rose again from the dead in order that men and women may enter the kingdom of God, in order that men and women may be born again. Those Jesus came for. He didn't come for everybody, don't you know? Oh, we're not here. Don't mistake us. We're not here to save the world. We're not even here to save the city of Glasgow. But some, doubtless, we do believe that God has some people here in the city of Glasgow they would be pleased to reconcile to himself. You see, God's people were all chosen before the foundation of the world. And instead of Jesus, that he, he's given the name Jesus, for he shall save his people, his people, not everybody, his people from their sin. My sheep, he says, my sheep I give unto them, not the goats, not the goats. The goats go to the left, the sheep go to the right. The goats go to everlasting destruction, and the sheep go to everlasting life. My sheep, says Jesus, my sheep, they hear my voice. Maybe you can't hear his voice today. Maybe that's because you're not one of his sheep. I don't know. But my sheep, he says, they hear my voice. They follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. So, don't mistake, my friends. We're not here to save everybody. But who knows, maybe, well, So you see, my friends, not everybody, not everybody, but those whom God will call by his son Jesus Christ to be his sheep, to follow him, and to receive eternal life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The alternative, that is, to everlasting eternal death. You see, my friends, there, there is a way out, There's a, there is hope, you see. But how, how says the Bible, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And the Bible does not answer that question because the answer is logical. If you neglect, if you reject God's salvation, 
you shall not escape your sin life, your bondage and sin, your guilt and shame. You shall not escape death, everlasting, eternal death. You shall not escape the flames and the fires of hell. You will not escape, my friends. There's only one way of escape, and his name is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. None other name, says the Bible, under heaven, whereby we must be saved. The name of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, sent into the world, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, who came to bring grace and truth for us. Grace, my friends, grace is free. Grace, my friends, is unmerited. Grace is something you don't work for. You can't be religious for it. You can't be good for it. You can't be anything for it. Because the moment you say you have to do something for it, like Islam and like Roman Catholicism, the moment you say you have to do for it, it's no longer free. You have to work for it, do something for it. But that's not God's grace. God's grace is perfectly free. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the grace of God, is eternal like free. Grace of God comes at great cost. Comes at the cost of the death of God's Son. The only begotten Son of God who came into the world step down into the sin cursed world took upon him weak flesh but yet without sin lived that beautiful life fulfilling god's demands his law and my friends going to that cross and bearing the curse upon himself the curse that lies upon the entirety of humanity. The curse of God because of man's sin. Because of your father Adam's sin. A nature passed on to you through natural generation. That can only be cured. Can only be changed. Transformed by regeneration. Miraculous regeneration the son of god came to redeem those under the curse that those who trust in his dying love the curse of god is lifted from off of them he bore the wrath of god due to the sin of man on that cross he took it all he drank down every last dreg of it, my friend, in order that the sinner, now under the wrath of God, that it might be lifted off of them. My Bible tells me, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. No, revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth, hold down the truth of the knowledge of God in unrighteousness and wickedness, denying what they know to be blatantly obvious that God is. And because of your denial, you're holding down the truth in unrighteousness. The wrath of God lies upon you. But then there's the coming wrath of God. There's the wrath to come. There's the full, fierce, all oh, unmitigated stream of God's wrath that in that day when you stand before him and judgment will be poured out upon you. Unless my Jesus saves you, unless my Savior comes to you and calls you out of your darkness 
into his marvelous light unless you hear the voice of the Son of God unless you hear him calling you effectively calling you out of your darkness calling you into his light calling you calling you by the gospel this is the means by which Jesus calls sinners and what is his call his call is repent ye and believe the gospel Glasgow repent ye and believe the gospel that's his call but he's coming again sir with his holy angels in flaming fire to take vengeance upon all that know not God and them that obey not the gospel, the call of the gospel. You reject it and you go on rejecting it to the end of your earthly existence, my friends, you will be met with the vengeance of the Lord Jesus Christ in that day. Unless you obey the call and are brought to a knowledge of God in a covenant of friendship, a knowledge of God as your Father in Jesus Christ, and the knowledge of his son Jesus Christ to me said this is eternal life knowing God and knowing his son whom he said whom he appointed and anointed to be a savior to call men out of their sin to call them out of their depravity and to call them into the kingdom of God faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God this is the means by which God calls men and women foolishness says the world a man standing on a ladder at the top of Buchanan Street with a Bible in his hand and shouting about the Bible and God foolishness says the world utter foolishness Yes, says God, he agrees with you. He says it's foolishness to those who are perishing, to those who are dying in their sin. So what I'm doing here today is foolishness to you. That's evidence that you're perishing, that you're on your way to a lost eternity. But to those, my friends, who are being saved, the preaching of the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. For those who believe, not for those who are religious, eh? not religion, not for those who go to church, the synagogue, the mosque, the temple, or whatever else, those who come to Jesus, those who come to Jesus in faith, those who come in the way of repentance and faith, that's the call. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Faith, my friends, a true faith, imparted to you by God himself, the gift of faith, my friends. It comes to men and women by the grace of God, the kindness of the merciful kindness of God. He's a merciful God. He's a kind God. He gave the world the gift of his son. And he poses the question to you here again today. What will you do with my son? My only begotten son. And the answer of the world up until now has always been crucify him away with him we don't want him he's not fit for this world is that your answer again today oh what will you do with god's son jesus christ kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish from the way oh Oh, my friends, Jesus, 
God's gift to this world that men and women lost in sin, faced with the inevitability of death and inescapable judgment, for it is appointed unto man, divinely appointed unto man once to die, you're gonna die, and no, not a black hole, not an unknown, not a nobody knows, after this comes the judgment. Then, my friend, face to face with your maker, with the God whom you have sinned against. Because against God and God only have you sinned. And that sin as well, young man, that sin as well, repent and believe the gospel. Repent, man. Get on your knees, cry out to the Almighty, he have mercy on you. Point it, point it unto man, wants to die, inescapable, and judgment inevitable. After this comes the judgment, face to face with the God whose law you've trashed, whose love you've scorned, upon whom you've turned your back upon the God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that by believing, believing, believing only believe, says Jesus if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth whosoever believeth shall not perish but have everlasting life faith in Jesus justifies before God makes a man or woman right with God justifies them sanctifies them makes them holy reconciles them to God faith and faith alone apart from works trusting only trusting, my friends, only believing gets you saved, gets you into the kingdom of God, gets you right with God, enables you to escape the coming wrath of God, enables you, my friends, to be brought into the kingdom of God's love, and grace and kindness and mercy to enjoy the unsearchable riches of Christ which cannot be purchased with money they cannot be gained by your supposed doing good only by faith only believing only trusting that's the admonition with the assurance, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Glasgow. The call of the gospel, the call of the Son of God. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Turn, accept ye, repent. Ye shall all likewise perish. God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. If you would like a copy of God's Word, 
freely offered to you. Read all about Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. What of God written offered to you? Read and see the wonderful things that Jesus has accomplished. What the law could never do. What man can never do. Accomplishing salvation by coming, living, dying, rising again from the dead and saving, saving the souls of men and women, even now, day by day. You like a copy of God's Word? Read for yourself. Read all about it, the Gospel, the Good News. The only good news in Glasgow today, the gospel of my Lord Jesus Christ. You'd like a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you. May God bless you, Glasgow, and the mercy, mercy I see upon your precious, precious, never dying souls.